to Heart Ministry Radio Network. And uh, I want to thank you for coming in today and zoning in because uh, we have an amazing person here for you, a special guest. I am Pastor Stacy, and I want to introduce an awesome, awesome lady, uh, Vanessa Phillips Esquire. She is the Chief Administrative and Operations Leader at Newcastle County. And I have to say that I was amazed that when I met her, she is an awesome person. When I met Vanessa, I didn't know exactly who she was, but the presence, her presence was amazing. And uh, I just, I think I tapped you and I said, you have a strong presence. You sure did. And she did, she did. But I wanted to bring you here to Heart Ministry Network today so you can get an idea of who this amazing young lady is with Newcastle County. So Vanessa, please tell me, who is Vanessa Phillips, the woman? Well, I would say when I look in the mirror, I see a child of God. I have been blessed yes. throughout my life. Um, I'm a native Washingtonian, born and raised in oh. Washington, D.C. Awesome. To a single mom who was a D.C. police officer. Wow. So um, I worked my way up to uh, becoming the CAO of Newcastle County. Okay. Um, but outside of work, I'm a mother of two beautiful children. Awesome. And I'm also a professor at Delaware State University in their law studies program. Wow. So Amazing. I just started teaching and giving back to the young people in our community. Which is of most importance. Yes, it is. So, it is. I mean, just giving back to, and she's at Dell State you know, University, giving back to people who look like her. Yes. yes. That's amazing. And I'm, I think that's just a blessing. And, you know, I didn't know her faith or anything, but she had the presence. And that presence, when you see somebody and you have a strong presence, it's not always based on a title. It's not based on the exterior, but it's based on, and I say anointing because you feel it. Yes. It was something I felt. And it was a lot of prominent people that day there, but I didn't feel that presence with everyone. And I just said, you had a strong presence. So I needed everybody else to see this young lady. And when I was able to meet with her and speak with her, I was amazed. And uh, just the professionalism and the humbleness that you don't only see when you see really children of God. And it was, it was amazing. And I just, I just wanted to know, how did you get started with Newcastle County? Well, it's an amazing story. Okay. <laughs> it's an amazing story because I never set out to become a political appointee. Okay. Um, I do believe that the Lord has definitely ordered my steps. Oh, for sure. Because um, I graduated from law school, went back to D.C. I worked at a police department for a little while in the general counsel's office and then became a prosecutor. Wow. And um, ended up, you know, marrying a, a, a man who wanted to be a Delaware State trooper. And the idea of moving back to Delaware gave me a lot of anxiety <laughs> <laughs> because I went to University of Delaware and uh, my last year I said, I'm going back home and I'm never coming back to Delaware. <laughs> but here you are, <laughs> here I am. So I said, you know, when we make plans, sometimes God laughs and says, no, I have another plan for you. That's right. And I ended up back in Delaware and I was working at Dell Dot. And Governor Markell tapped me to become the uh, Deputy Secretary of Labor. And I went there yes. and worked under Secretary Patrice Gilliam Johnson. And Matt Meyer had ran for county executive yes. against Tom Gordon, and he won, which was a miracle. A miracle, yes. Because Tom Gordon had been uh, county executive for many years and had the name recognition and um, Matt Meyer did not. But I went to the Delaware Barristers Gala. And at the time my husband went up to him and said, congratulations, but you need a good lawyer on your side. And here's my wife. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is my wife, Vanessa, and she's an awesome lawyer. You know, you need to, you need to hire her. And Matt gave me his card 
and I gave this card to another friend who's a lawyer at the county. I said, hey, this is the new county wow, executive. That's right. And perhaps you need to, you know, reach out to him. Um, he's going to be your new boss. But lo and behold, a few weeks later, I got a call from his chief of staff and said, your name came up a few times as we're building our team and Matt Meyer wants to interview you for the chief human resources officer. And I went in and I interviewed and the next day he called and said, you got the job. So that's yeah. how I ended up at Newcastle County. And that's an appointment. Yes. As that's a, an appointment. Yes, and yes. You know, when God ordered your steps, he said, I know the plans I have for you, Vanessa. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but That's give you right. a hope in the future. That's right. And That's clearly he has set the tone for you and ordered your steps. Yes, yes. That's amazing. Wow. So, I mean, are you guys amazed at just the, just the steps so far? Well, we want to get a little deeper into this. And uh, what are some of the characteristics, Vanessa, that you exhibited that brought attention to you to bring forth the advancement to the position that you now hold? I would say uh, the fact that I treat others with respect. Um, I listen to others. I am always open to hearing what others have to contribute. Um, I've always been humble. I've always been very uh, grateful for every opportunity. <laughs> yes. And um, I think when you treat people with respect, you get the respect, get the respect. back. And so um, I think that that has definitely helped me on my journey. Also, uh, being committed, being dedicated to always doing the right thing. Yeah. Always uh, making sure that in everything that I do, I'm doing it to please the Lord. Mm, and yes. so, you know, that's always my, my goal, always talk about, you know, wanting to be that virtuous woman that's yes. talked about in, in the Bible. And so um, I always just set out to do that, to do the right thing, to be a virtuous woman and um, making sure that, you know, I'm treating others well. In the way you want to be treated. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, when you talk about respect and all those things, it starts with you. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I, I try to tell the young people. It's, it starts with you. And if you respect yourself, then others will. And the example that you set, people will follow. You know, so right. so you have you have definitely a um, great example, and especially to be someone in leadership. And uh, I think the county is blessed to have someone like you, oh, you. and to lead them because you need leaders build other strong leaders. And that's what it seems that you do, Vanessa. You build other strong leaders. When you walk into a room, the pr your presence changes things. And that's because of those things, those those morals, those values that you've always had, you know? So that's amazing. That was such a blessing to have Vanessa on Heart Ministry Network today. So I know you work with Human Resources as a director of Newcastle County. Yes. Tell us how, what type of strategies that you use to improve the morale and the motivation of employees. Because with the county, people stay. And you don't see a lot of turnover. That's right. So I, I want to know, what are some of the things, that strategies that you use to improve those areas? Well, um, when I went into the role of Chief Human Resources Officer, one of the first things that I implemented was new employee orientation. Making sure that when people came into the door on their first day, they had an opportunity to meet the county executive, to hear about his goals for the county, mm -hmm. and talk about our core values of honesty, transparency, integrity, and so that employees understand what the mission is as an employee of uh, Newcastle County. Another thing that I did was make sure that the diversity commission was led by commissioners who really cared about employees who had either a human resources background or background in leadership. And then also uh, providing training for managers and supervisors. I implemented a management training program to teach supervisors and managers how to treat 
their employees, mm-hmm. making so sure that you create work-life balance. Um, because when you have happy employees, employees who are happy at home, most likely they're going to be happy at work and Absolutely. they're going to work harder for you. They're going to work harder for the citizens mm. of the county. Yes, that's morale. And and I think that's so important to uh, set those standards and, and make people aware of the expectations um, that the county has. And um, the county is an awesome place. And. Of course, Matt Myers is too. And, you know, just to appoint someone like Vanessa, you know, his, his steps were ordered too. That's right. So it's just, it's just amazing. Uh, so how do you measure success in your role? And tell us the metrics that you use. So you actually touched on it. Employee satisfaction. Okay. Um, our retention rate and the referrals that we get Mm -hmm. from um, our current employees. Absolutely. I'm always amazed in new employee orientation when employees come down to the executive office and the county executive will ask them, so how did you hear about Newcastle County government? Why did you decide to apply for a job here? And quite often you hear uh, employees say, oh, you know, my cousin worked for the county or uh, my father uh, retired from the county. Um, and you have, have people who say, you know, I have friends and neighbors who work for the county and they talk about how awesome it is to have Newcastle County as an employer. So getting those referrals from people who are actually working there yes. shows that uh, employees are satisfied. And that makes me feel like I'm doing my job well, um, making sure that people have that work-life balance, um, that there's good morale throughout the county government. Yes, yes. And then also um, that they're satisfied, you know, sending out employee satisfaction surveys. Mm-hmm. Um, my first year with the county, um, I sent out one of those uh, electronic surveys and said, you know, please just let us know how we can improve. That's right. You know, because we're here to hear from you. You know, how can we make this a great place? Um, for you to work. And so I think all of those things have played a role in um, in measuring my success as a leader. Absolutely. And and saying that you value your employees, mm-hmm. you know, and when the employee, employees feel valued, they tend to work harder for you. That's right. You know, and the fact that you are concerned about how do they feel about their position? Are there any things that you think we should change? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, getting feedback, I think that's so important. Praise God. It's just a blessing to have Miss Vanessa Phillips on our show today. I just feel blessed. And uh, I think that you needed to hear the importance of somebody in leadership who takes their role and their position to heart and understand that their steps are ordered by the Lord. That's a blessing, you know, and uh, just to glorify God and give him the credit for the positioning. I think that's so important that we don't hide those things and uh, just put it on the table. So tell me, how does leadership impact the future of our next generation? Wow. I think that leadership um, has to recognize the value that the next generation brings to the table, Yes, making sure that we are reaching um, young people, meeting them where they are. Um, We have a number of programs at the county, um, namely our summer youth employment program Mm -hmm. that we have actually extended throughout the school year to make sure that not only um, students are being able to bring in some income in their household, but also getting the soft skills that they will need to be successful in the future because they are our future leaders. They are. So making sure that they're prepared to take that torch and carry it on is very important. So doing things at the county um, to uh, train and mentor uh, 
young people um, is, is very important. And I just want to mention one program um, that I was instrumental instrumental in bringing to the county, and that's a thousand kids coding. <laughs> a thousand kids coding is a, a Newcastle County partnership with a company called Code Differently. That's an African American yes. um, coding company, and they are training our young people on how to code because a lot of times they don't get those opportunities to learn, you know, the future technology. Yes, yes. So uh, partnering with Code Differently has been very important in making sure that our young people are keeping up with the jobs of the future. And oh, I yeah. think as long as we're doing that for our young people, our future is right. And letting them know what the value of coding is and very familiar with that program. Uh, Stephanie, yes. amazing. Yes. Uh, I was a part of the youth workforce development, very instrumental in the training. Love the kids and to see that they value the coding program and that the county is supporting this 100%. I mean, what blessings can you ask for for the county, you know, to support that? So I, I just am just amazed, Vanessa, about the things that you've done all the things that you've accomplished for a young woman. You know, it, it's an example. It's such an example and we have to start giving back and looking at our young people, but more importantly, being examples for them. And so I need to know, look into that camera, Vanessa, because she's amazing and to hear everything she's done, but more importantly, what she's doing. Because you can have all the faith in the world, but it's the works that you do that matters. So tell, inspire some young people who look like you, who are looking for hope, who are dreaming. Help them achieve their goals. How do you tell them? Especially how to motivate them and inspire them to achieve their goals, especially in this political and economic climate? I would say the most important thing is never give up. Never give up because things may not be perfect. Um, you may have challenges in life, but if you stay focused on your goals, if you stay focused on the end, what the end will be, you can do anything. I know this for sure because of my background. As I stated earlier, I come from a single parent home. Um, I was a latchkey kid coming home, you know, to making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches <laughs> or tuna That's fish and right. crackers <laughs> because my mom had to work, you know, yeah. to provide for the household. But um, that didn't stop me. You know, I always told people when I grow up, I want to be a lawyer. I had never seen anyone in my family go to college. I was the first person in my family oh, to go to college. But um, I was able to, you know, get into programs like the Higher Achievement Program for Disadvantaged Youth, um, the Howard University Upward Bound Program that took kids who were first generation um, college student um, perspectives and helping them learn how college would be so that you would be successful as a first generation college student. Mm. So getting involved in programs like that for disadvantaged youth gave me hope and it gave me the motivation to keep going even when it seemed like my goal was so far away or it was almost impossible because no one in my family had ever gone to college. And even my mom said to me, girl, stop playing. Go get that application from the post <laughs> office <laughs> and go work at the post office with your That's sister. Right. But I said, well, no, I want to be a lawyer. I want right. to be a lawyer and God will make a way. And he did. He you did. Know, I got some scholarship money, a few school loans. I worked throughout college. I worked at Christiana Mall at Champ Sports. <laughs> and, you know, wherever I can get a job, That's I worked right. at Coles. You know, just putting my money together and keeping focused on my goal of completing college, going to law school, and just continuing to pray and put God first. You know, I always pray, you know, God, whatever you want from me, just lead me. Just tell me what I need to do next. And I think those things um, really helped me achieve my goals. And I just want young people to know that, you know, it may not be easy, 
but just stay focused and stay prayed up. And it looks like, is that amazing? But there was no fear. And if there was fear, the faith overrode that. Faith and fear cannot operate in the same arena. Amen. Okay? Because of the contamination. Well, it clearly shows that Vanessa has used faith in the steps that were ordered by the Lord to lead her into such an excellent position in that she oversees the county and under the leadership of Matt Myers. But she is that example. I mean, if you see Vanessa, she's operating just like Matt. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm just excited to have her here today to talk about the things that led her to the position that she's in, but also to give hope to the other young ladies and the other African-American young people who seek political arenas and to be in economic development and see the changes that can take place, if you believe. So I am just thankful, Vanessa, for you coming on today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> and um, just to talk about her position, who she is, what she stands for at the county, but more importantly, what got her there? What led her there? It was God. So trust and believe. But also, ask Vanessa, please give us, give us your contact information, us, if you would like to talk to her, and especially to the young folks and or to anybody who have a desire to be better and to seek things that you wouldn't normally be able to achieve. Hope is available. I can be contacted at vanessa.phillips at newcastlede.gov or you can contact the Office of the County Executive for Newcastle County at 395-5114. Again, we want to thank Vanessa Phillips for coming on to Heart Ministry Network. Thank you.